Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the vlog. Look at the sunshine beaming through that window, isn't it gorgeous? Onto the rugged floor. Where's the boil kettle and the HLT gone, you might ask? It's over there, disconnected, relocated, while we prep this floor up. Mash tons in the cauldron. So, aha, I've been down on my hands and knees. Yes, presenting myself, you might say. Fortunately, there's nobody around to take advantage of it. And we have been scarifying the deck. That's right, we've been scratching up the floor. And it has come time now for me to replace a second grinder. You've got to remember I've had these grinders for about four years now, three or four years. And uh, the Iron Hill, let's shoot down here. And have a look at the Einhell grinder, which was my favourite one that I purchased from Tool Station a long, a long time ago. And the meat of her, you know, well, she, she's good in your hand, nice red tip, perfect fit. Hold her in your left hand, feels like somebody else has got hold of it, like. But the trouble is, the arbor, just, you can probably not make that out, there's just a little side to side weeble wobble just like on the bearing it's 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 enough that when you've got the big heavy grinding disc on it vibrates that much it keeps knocking this off of course it still works i took the head off yeah I took the gland end off and uh, had a look at what was going inside and it was a sloppy mess for sure full of sputum and uh all gooey stuff, but uh, there didn't seem to be any damage, just a little bit of wobble in the bearing, so put her back together and I think she's going to be fine just for slitting steel and maybe using a, uh, a, a pad, you know, what do you call it, an abrasive wheel or something like that, shouldn't be a problem, but this was the grinder that I kind of jerry-rigged up to this little floor grinding accessory over here and uh, yeah I'll be sorry to see her go so what I've done is I've purchased another one and I've also got the big brother the 230 mil hopefully the shroud is the same I think the arbor's the same if the shroud's the same then I can connect that dust extracting shroud up to it and the smaller disc and hopefully because she's got a bit more meat on the gland the 231 the 230 mil Iron Hill Grinder, it'll be, uh, it'll be more durable. Anyway, because that one burnt out and I wanted to carry on with the job, well not burnt out, but uh, what got a bit of a weeble, a bit of a speed wobble on, um, the reason I keep saying burnt out is because I swapped over to this Draper and only because that's the only one where this shroud would fit around the arbor collar and this one did burn out. There was smoke coming out of uh, this end and smoke coming out of its anus just there. So I uh, I did this much. What we got here? One, two, three, four, maybe four square meters. And uh, she started chooching. So I thought maybe I shouldn't. I could tell it was going to go. I had to let go of it and turn it off because the body was so hot. So that's the position we're in now. I'm going to go and pick up the new grinders from Tool Station, come back in. I'm hoping that today, it's 1.30 now, I'm hoping that we can get all this ground down. I'm going to have to work around these four fermenters here because they contain beer. And then get all this section over here primed and then a couple of coats of the resin. And then while I do that, this side along here will give me a walkway so I can walk in and out of the building without uh, it being a problem. We'll also do half of the ramp, kind of up to where the gas bottle is. And then we'll do the old switcheroo in a couple of three days. I think we're going to have to wait till this cures and goes off. We're going to have to can what's in here and then we're going to have to pull that stuff out once we've canned it and uh, attack the floor behind so not a big patch but I'd probably do that section there 
and then whatever's left on this side here and then we'd have a walkway down the middle so escape plan is in place should we need to pack up and go home at the end of the day without having to traverse wet resin flooring so that's the plan so far splitting it into sections but the key and this is the key this section here I want to make sure is treated very well indeed kind of from the brush in an arch out to the fermenters and then this side this is all where most traffic is kind of uh, concentrated so this needs to be the best it can be in order to take as much uh, traffic as possible before we start to see damage to the floor hopefully that won't happen very fast and of course the trouble is once you've laid a new floor there is going to be a time when you do have to start putting track marks on it now I am pleased that all this lot is just superficial it's just all dust look you can see I'm rubbing it out of my foot so the floor has stood up to the pallet truck moving all of this stuff up here this morning and compared to when I came yesterday and tapped it oh yeah that'll pull my nails off now so it's not as stiff as a wedding prick yet but it's certainly harder than most so I'm happy to put stuff up here for now right I've just seen on the screen tool station says my orders ready I'm gonna go and pick it up because time waits for no man and we are on the clock Well, I'm going to take this opportunity to help myself to a coffee and Gemma kindly made me an egg sandwich this morning with our own eggs, of course. So I'm going to eat that and then I can share it with her again tonight when I get home. I'm sure she'll love me for that. Right, first things first. Brander. We need to take off this little bushing, which goes with that grinding wheel. And we can put that back on there. And then we need to disconnect this shroud from this particular machine because it ain't got the minerals. Look in the fucking bucket, as they say. Right, so we've got two options here. We've got the big bar steward. A big iron hill and I'm hoping yeah, it's looking dangerous look look at the size of the arbor difference there <clears throat> so not the arbor but you know what I mean I don't think this is going to work god it's heavier it's considerably heavier let's find out Of course we are going to have the same size blade, oh come on you son of a bitch, not blade but arbor, there we go. So we'll just double check that she fits on there but I can see straight away that it does. Right that's me problem my pet, get rid of all this packaging, probably just going to kill a dolphin somewhere no doubt. Right, now can we get this to reside on that housing at all? There is a little bit of adjustment in it, but not a lot. I don't think it's going to work for you. I don't think it's going to work at, at all, which is a shame. Having that big bastard on the floor would do all the work I needed it to. I'm going to see if I can retrofit this, folks. Uh, but fail that. We do have its little sister kind of ready to ready to go over it, just in case. That is what that looked like. 
quite a few years ago. So we know it fits on that. So if we need to, we'll pop it on there. But I'm really hoping we can fiddle around with this. I just need to open this section up a touch. Don't think we've got enough width on the mouth. Mm. Mm, it's such a shame. How far away are we? Let's go far off. Let's just get off there. You know, I could could get it to fit. But the trouble is, if I break it, then I've got to go and buy another one of these. It's probably not worth it. Let's just, uh, yeah, we don't want to break the big one because the big one was the pricey one. Well, there we go then. That's unfortunate, but it is what it is, isn't it? We're going to have to put this back on there. Have to tighten this all the way down. You see, even this. It's a little bit on the on the tight side. It didn't want to play originally when I installed it. It does come with some bushings in the kit, which you can use, but quite frankly, they're shit. So I didn't bother. Which is why it only fits on like two of the grinders that I've got. This one and the tother. There we go. So pop that back on. Needs a standoff because it's too close. That will do it. That one that way round. We'll see how long it takes us to break this one, shall we? I don't think it'll take long at all. I'm just going to see if I can tighten this nut a bit. Because it still feels just a touch too loose around the collar. That's all she wrote. There we go. So let's get her in service. <laughs> it's convenient, isn't it? I normally take these to the end of the cable. So if I need quick access to them, you just unplug the plug and then you can immediately remove your disc. Oh, there we go. Didn't even have time to enjoy my coffee, did I? Well, never mind. Back to work, boys and girls. And, uh, yeah. Let's get cracking with this floor. What the hell have I done with that? I did have a, did have a blade here. Stupid. Turn off the plug. Just get it away. Right, we're off. We'll see you soon. Well, it got a second lease of life. But it's just let out a big fat fart and more smoke. So I'm afraid she's dead. Shall we try it? I'm going to put a glove on just in case. Ignore the radio. If it's adverts and not over it. Alright, you ready? Nothing. The Uber comes on, but nothing out of there. She's proper, proper dead like folks. I'm just having a break. My back's hurting a little bit. But as you can see, we ain't got a lot to go, and I think it's only just hit 3 o'clock, 3.45. Lost a bit of time there. This section here is going to need some attention. You see how kind of eaten away it is. All the aggregate exposed. I might be able to shave down the top layer on that section, just to give us a nice surface. We had something very similar just here. As you can see through one or two of the larger pits, 
I've got my nice boots on today, look, Uvex. Anyway, this was really quite bad. And you can see that we've cut into quite a lot of the aggregate and it's leveled it out nicely. And of course, we're not taking a lot off the surface because you can still see the paint speckles here and there. So it's just uh, skimming at the top. Well, what would you say? What would you say, really? Tenth of a millimeter? Uh, anyway, I also thought I'd show you this is what we've collected. This is a combination of dust and paint, which has been caught by the little cyclone thing there, which sits on top of the bucket and prevents all this going into the vac. And what a cracking job it does, too, and also prevents all that going into the air. And as you can see, strobing aside, there's no dust in the air. No dust in the air. So that vac is excellent. It does the job perfectly. So I'm just going to go and tip this into the uh, into the biffer bin. And we've got that little corner to finish off there. Just a little bit on this side. I like to go over, you know, the cracks that I repaired yesterday. Just buzzed over them as well because they've set nice and hard because it's resin. And then you can just see like this hard lip where I've cut in. Well, once we've been across it, it glides across like that. And you can see there's a nice finish there. So we shouldn't see that join on the finished product. So, yeah, I'm just going to run along here. And then we're going to go about half a metre out from the drain, same there, and then we're going to run from about here, see, so we've got enough room to go up the stairs if we need to, we're going to run straight across and hit the corner of this drain there, and then zip up and get that last little bit, and then when we move everything across, after we've done this, emptied these tanks and done the canning, We'll just have this little section from that wood up, which won't be a lot at all. It'll just be basically maybe five, six square metres under there. There'll just be a little section from here, because remember I'm not doing inside where the new cold rooms are going to go. So it'll probably be from about here upwards to that corner to fill that section in where the shutters are. And then we're going to also come down into the kitchen area and we'll be, jo we'll be joining this section here flowing into the kitchen and then also as we mentioned on a previous vlog so far down here and then we're going to transition again back to the red and then we're just going to have normal floor paint in the workshop because I do tend to damage the floor covering, floor coating in here. You know, if I'm doing some spray painting, I don't know if you remember a while back, I made some shaker wardrobe doors, and you can see an outline of it there, look. I painted the floor, and then I spray painted the doors, and immediately kind of overspray got all over the new paint. So if I just keep it in here, floor paint, then I can recoat that without having to go to the expense of brewery floor coating. Because let's face it, this is specialist paint for a hygienic production area. And, uh, well, workshop floor paint is for grinding sparks and spirit level bubbles and all that kind of jazz. So, there we go. I'm going to tip this away and hopefully. I do want to get this finished off today, so I've got like maybe an hour to take me up to 10 to 5. That should see all the grinding complete. And then half an hour of vacuuming and brushing to make sure that it's absolutely clear. Got to take these drains up and then we're going to drop down first coat of primer and then we're away. We are away. Oh, all done. Right, six o'clock on the dot, or oh, the news has just been on anyway. So, and I need to mix up 
the resin for the base coat and apply it to the floor. I think we're going to be doing two tins this time round. So I want a nice thick base coat you see because after applying the base coat at the top I thought it was really quite good so I thought well if you had a thick base coat you need less top coat. That was my uh, thoughts anyway because the base coat's a little bit cheaper but it goes off just as hard. Just oh it's really hard. So let's get this applied with the roller and uh, yeah, I'll be sweating when it's done and then we'll be going home. So I'll give you a quick view of the completed article when we finished it. What'd you look at that? Oh my goodness. That is quite a lot of coverage. So we've got two 10 kilos of primer down there, which is actually a little bit too much. But there's certain areas, like here, and along here, where I've applied it really quite thick. You might be able to see some sections, it's really thick just there. And it's thick along this edge here as well. So, I'm hoping it levels itself out, which it seems to be doing. And that will give us a little bit of durability on the sections you can see how thick it is there look it's like glass where those cracks are because I wanted it to fill in those cracks as well but it does set like it is a proper resin so fingers crossed that sets up rock solid and it's all nice and shiny ready for the top coat to go on maybe tomorrow night maybe the day after because it's so thick I think it's going to take a while to, to set up and then uh, We'll be moving on to the next bit, but wow, look at it all. I think that's going to be a massive improvement. Uh, anyway, that's it. Finished. See you on the next one, boys and girls. Thank you very much.